Funding for this program was provided in part by the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust and by Meridian Gold. In 1970, a friend and I started something called the Salt Flat News. It was a tabloid modeled after the uh, New York Daily News. We were just coming out of the 60s. There were a lot of tabloids. They were all about uh, social turmoil and revolution. And we thought, well, just as an antidote to that, we'd go out to the Salt Flats. We thought, where's the, where's the place where nothing could possibly happen? And we called it the Salt Flat News, and ostensibly that was where we were based. But as a result of that, I realized there's a lot of stuff even happens on the salt flats. Wherever you are, something's happening. Great Basin was the last physiographic province of the United States to be defined, to be discovered. It's a sink in both a physical sense and an imaginative sense, in that water flows in and doesn't flow out. Imagination kind of flows in and doesn't flow out. Well, this place is sort of a magnet for people who don't fit in anywhere else. There's a saying that uh, people who don't fit in anywhere else go to Nevada, and uh, people who don't fit in Nevada go to Battle Mountain. But uh, that's kind of unkind. If I was going to make any kind of generalization about a Western state of mind, I would just say, let's make it a broad-based generalization. Say you've got to be, you know, a sun lover and a wide open spaces kind of person. Because, you know, that is, that is the West. I mean, Nevada is sure not like Massachusetts. So it's a, uh, it's a state that is uh, a state of mind, you know, it's often said, as well as a state, of, a state of physical geography that's very specific. Has more mountain ranges per square mile than anywhere else in the world except for Afghanistan. Um, you know, 340 or plus separate mountain ranges in the Great Basin. And it's an extraordinary territory uh, that almost defies our ability to scale ourselves within it and to understand it. I think that the fact that this is public land, this is federally owned land, that uh, all citizens have a right to be here. Uh, you can camp anywhere you want. Uh, and uh, you don't have to drop some money in a, in a slot. You're not overly regulated. Another thing that makes for a, a nice Western state of mind, if you're not hung up on trees, really helps. You know, you get into California and there's just too many damn trees. You can't see anything. People who love trees and who need trees and who have to have trees, they're not going to be so Western. But if you can handle the occasional pocket of trees or whatever, you're going to be, I don't know about Western, you're going to be a desert person. You're certainly going to be a Great Basin person. I think it was a magnet for for a certain type of person. And I found, although you don't meet a lot of people out here, if you do meet someone, that's quite an unusual person who has quite an unusual story. I remember sitting there one day reading about Mark Twain, his, his book, Roughing It. I started wishing I could be on that stagecoach going west toward Virginia City on this road. And uh, bit by bit, I started moving westward toward Nevada. Across the stretch and eventually worked myself, uh, my way all the way across Nevada. You know, the, the longer you're on this part of the, uh, this side of the uh, world out here in the Great Basin, the, the more you like it. Yeah, most of the people in my book I did meet in the 70s. It was, uh, it was a magical time for me. My bus was fairly new and uh, more reliable. And you had a strange mix, uh, a little boost from the hippie movement mingled with the uh, 
the regular uh, hobos and drifters who lived out here and uh, just being young and out here and open to experience. Uh, I met people that uh, seem to be rare, rarer and rarer today. I'm not primarily a landscape photographer because uh, if you come out here, you'll see these mountains uh, haven't seemed to change much. I mean, I can't see the change. They are changing, but at such a slow pace that uh, it won't register with me. But a person, a human being, is changing constantly. And uh, in just a snap of a second, you can save that moment. Uh, and that's the moment. Uh, I'm looking for the moment when a person is not self-conscious, uh, this just rapport maybe, uh, just a look that anyone looking at that picture would, would recognize the humanity, that shared humanity that we all have as human beings. Photography is the art of the instant, uh, the instant moment. Writing's different. Writing's more of a subjective, uh, it's something you can do at home at your desk. And it uh, draws more on your personal view of things where photography is, it's subjective to a, a degree, but it depends. My book is an attempt to, uh, the words do what I do photographically is just, just kind of be invisible and a fly on a wall and uh, let people talk. And, uh, you know, I use the tape recorder a lot. That's kind of a, a version of a camera. It's capturing, capturing reality in a box and, and holding on to that, holding on to that moment. The ordinance, so I, had to, I had to do away with 60 cars. Boy, that was a heartbreaker. Some of them still had a lot of good parts on them. Yeah, I think it's good to travel alone because you're, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to bad stuff, but also good stuff. But you're not insulated. And uh, as long as you're not, if, if a tour bus were to pull up to some old codger's cabin and everyone jumped out with cameras clicking, that would be pretty off-putting. I don't think they'd get much out of him. But if just a, just a lone guy in an unthreatening vehicle like I have, people are quite open and, and uh, people have been really good to me. But uh, I, I think it's important to just be vulnerable to uh, the experience when you're out here. Not run away from it, not hide from it. I wanted to document this. Last is a Volkswagen now. Well, this is where Volkswagens come to die. That's about the last they're, of the junkyard. They're like, they're like elephants. One of the, the nicknames for the Great Basin is the Big Empty. And it's a, it's a place that people really have to work hard to understand and then become comfortable in over time. So I think there are different kinds of people who come into this space. Some people just transit, they don't want to stop. Some people are here by accident because a car breaks down, which is some people have said is how half of Nevada got settled anyway. Um, some people are sent here to work and they either stay or go depending on how they react to the land. But you find these sort of clusters of people um, who end up spending time in Nevada and relating how they relate to the desert. The clusters can include things such as the people who simply like to go out for the day and recreate in it, look around, don't get too far from their car, don't get too far outside their comfort zone, and they, they relate to the desert that way. Other people will go out and say, let's leave the car behind, let's park, let's walk out for a day or two, let's camp, and stay here and spend some time here. Burning Man is kind of a, the largest example of that in the world. You know, if you've got 50,000 people out there, it's one of the largest cities in the state for a week. They all go out, they camp together, and then they pick up and go home. Another example is someone who might come to, to the Great Basin and say, I really want to live out there. I really want to be out in the landscape. I don't want to live in one of the big cities. I don't want to live in a town even. I want to be out by myself. And then, of course, there are the true hermits, the true desert hermits, who want absolutely nothing to do with anyone else, in as much as that's possible. No satellite phone, uh, no satellite TV, no cell phone, uh, nothing. No landlines. They just want to be out by themselves. 
Often these are people who sort of scavenge from the land. They, they, find, they find materials around them, either left by other people or just in the land itself, put together their, their home, their domicile, and they're just as happy as they can be, as happy as they can possibly make themselves in a situation as large as the Great Basin.